welcome to my YouTube channel where we do painting tutorials. Today I have a pretty simple, straightforward, yet realistic landscape using watercolor pencils. And I start by coloring the sky with some Taylor Blue. I use medium to light pressure right in the middle of the page and use more pressure as I go up to make the top of the sky darker than the horizon. And I add just a small, small amount of Taylor Green over it to get a bit more of a turquoise kind of color. Then with a watercolor brush, I activate it going left to right, right to left, horizontal brush strokes. It's spring, I don't know if you can hear all of the very squeaking cry in front of my window, apologies if that bothers you but I literally can't do anything about it. And while the sky dries, I take my earthy green and I color the sides of the roads with it. I want some grassy fields on either side and maybe some hills framing the horizon right there to separate the hill from the field. I scribble a line with helium blue reddish, which is going to be like some tiny, tiny trees that are very up in the distance. And I lightly darken up that area where uh, the hills meet and I do some random patches of blue on the right side of the road because I want the trees on the left side and their shadow is going to fall on the right side. And I quickly go with some cadmium orange or the dark blue because orange and blue are opposites on the color wheel, meaning once those two mix you're going to get a very very dark color. And I thought I'd add a bit more green because I want to do this in one layer, I want to build it up gradually because I want this to be a pretty simple tutorial. And I add a smidge of yellow because why not? Then I blend the fields using long brush strokes and I just tap over those little trees I have there in the distance, that zigzag blue line I did. And then just blend the right side of the painting as well. While that dries, I'm going to color in the road, I'm going to use Pretty much all of my earthy tones for this, I start with Burnt Ochre, which on its own, once you activate, is very, very yellow, so that's why I'm going to add more colors onto it. I'm following the direction of the road, so the very side of the road, I want my pencil strokes to be a bit more curved towards the end of the road and towards the center of the paper. They're gonna be pretty much vertical lines. Then I go over with a bit of raw umber. I mostly focus on the sides because I want the grass fields to be casting a very slight shadow onto the road. Then I take my walnut brown and I do some larger shadows for the trees. They're pretty much diagonal and they spread out to the right side because like the tree crowns fall there. And I initially blend this with a tapping motion because it's a dirt road and dirt has texture. So I'm just tapping pretty much randomly all over this. You don't need to follow a certain order like from the burnt ochre to the walnut brown. Just make it as random as you can. And then I add some vertical brush strokes to sort of smooth it out. Like, yes, you have texture, but people and cars drove by it. You see some lines there like the tracks. And that was the idea I wanted to apply here. Now, once everything has tried, I take my earthy green and I scribble with it over the tree crowns to add some foliage. Apologies if you see me doing any random hand gestures throughout this video. Uh, this is actually the full-time painting lesson for my Patreon page, Sunshine Arts, uh, shameless self-promotion right there. But yeah, if you're interested in traceables for my painting tutorials, they're available on YouTube, digital downloads of my paintings, and full-time painting tutorials, you can find all that at my Patreon page, I'm gonna link it down in the description and also at the end of this video. And back to us, I underline the foliage of the trees with some cadmium orange, and you guessed it, I'm gonna go over the orange with some blue, and that is going to be my shadow color. I want it to be mostly on the bottom of the foliage and also build the sides where, for example, two or three grounds meet. It's like one is going to be overlapping with the other one. So you get a bit of a shadow there as well. But if that confuses you, just do the bombs and you'll be fine. Now I thought it was going to be a bit too blue, so I add a bit more green to this. And then I activate with a tapping motion to create some texture because leaves have texture. Again, it doesn't really matter uh, if you go from 
the blue towards the green or from the green towards the blue. But if you want to do a small subtle highlight, I suggest you clean your brush on a napkin and then you start activating the cluster like the little piece of the tree crown from the green towards the blue. Basically just use a clean brush is what I'm trying to say. Then with walnut brown, I sketch some tree trunks and some branches that connect all of this and make it make some sense. It really helps to use a fine sharpened pencil for this. If you're painting the background or the roll or some grassy field, something random, you do not need a sharp tip. I actually suggest you use a blunt pencil because you're going to preserve your colors because these pencils can be expensive, especially if they're decent quality. And you're fine using a blunt one. However, when you're trying to get some fine, sharp, detailed lines, that is the situation in which I advise you to sharpen your pencils as fine as you can. Otherwise, it's just going to be a struggle. And I'm also going to add some uh, fence balls to the right side of the painting, a larger one that is closer to us and a smaller one that is a bit more up in the distance. Then I take my black and I go over parts of the tree trunk because trees are not typically one solid shade of brown. You get a variety of shades, a variety of texture in them and that is why I go over the brown with some black and a bit of my halo blue reddish just to, just to make it look a bit more realistic, a bit less cartoony. Then I add the fence lines with a sharp black pencil and I sketch the shadows of the fence poles with blue over the grassy field. The art tip, instead of making them perfectly horizontal beneath the fence poles, make them slightly slanted. And the same goes for the shadows of the trees. Instead of making them go straight across the pink, make it slightly at an angle. And I'm using uh, my dark walnut brown. I'm gonna be adding a small, small amount of black just in a bit. I use blue for the shadow that is within the grassy field because blue is the color we used for the shadows for all of the greenery, so it makes more sense to use it as a shadow upon the grass rather than using straight brown. Then again with the walnut brown, I add some tiny I and V shapes for those tiny, tiny trees up in the distance. And I quickly go with a burning dam brush to activate the shadows I just did, make them pop a bit, make them slightly more vibrant. Now with the help of my helium blue radish, I'm going to first separate the tree crowns and add a bit more detail through the shadows. Basically I'm just going with more blue on the bottom of the tree crowns. And I thought I'd layer a bit of the yellow on the top left side of all the tree crowns, give a very very general highlight there. I go over some of the tree trunks and branches with my blue and then I thought I'd add a couple of birdies in the sky because why not. Then I quickly darken up the shadows of the trees upon the road with a bit of black and that is it. i like to give a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters for the month of March and thank you all for watching. If you found any value or use in this video, let me know down in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this little painting lesson and we'll see each other in the next one. Bye bye!